We've got parametric equations, x in terms of t, y in terms of t, except they won't give us the uh, functions directly. They'll just give us the derivatives of x in terms of t and y in terms of t. They do give us an initial condition. And then they're asking us to walk through a whole series of calculations related to these functions. Now the good news is there's nothing tricky about these calculations. The bad news, if there is any, is that we need to know all of the formulas. And so in succession we're going to be calculating speed, acceleration, slope, position, and distance traveled. In part A, we start off by finding the speed of the particle. Now because this is a calculator question and because there are so many computations that we're being asked to do, I've gone ahead and put dx dt in for y1 and dy dt in for y2. You may wonder why it is that I don't work in parametric mode on the calculator. That's because oftentimes these questions ask you to switch back and forth between the two modes and so, or the calculations require you to switch back and forth between the two modes. And so I just find I have greater flexibility if I don't work in parametric mode, but just straight function mode, the standard mode of the calculator. At any rate, dx dt is in y1 dy dt is in y2. <clears throat> so first up is finding the speed of the particle. So again we have all these documents as all these formulas here as reference but I'm trying to write in black what it is that I would put on the actual AP free response and to model that for you. So I'm going to write the formula out. We're going to say is that speed at time t equals 3, essentially all of these calculations are done at t equals 3, is going to equal the square root of dx dt squared. That's the quantity dx dt, and then we square it, plus dy dt squared, again the quantity, and then we'll take the square root but we're going to evaluate it at t equals 3 and t equals 3. And I'm going to say that that is approximately, and now we're going to do the calculation on the calculator. So we go back to the regular screen, the main screen, and what we want to calculate is the square root of uh, first thing we're going to put in is y1. That quantity at t equals 3. And that quantity is going to be squared. Plus, oops, I don't mean to have the plus sign up top. So I'm going to say plus y2 evaluated at t equals 3 that quantity squared and that entire thing we're taking the square root 13.00 And just because I'm obsessive compulsive, I'm going to say evaluated numerically. Huh. Next, they want the acceleration, still part of part A. Now, unlike speed, which is a single number, acceleration is a vector quantity. 
we're going to write acceleration at 3. That's going to equal the second derivative of the x uh, function with respect to time evaluated at t equals 3 comma the second derivative of the y function with respect to time also evaluated at t equals 3 and that's going to be approximately equal to now here's a little bit of a shortcut we have the first derivative here the second derivative is just 4 so there's no need for us to approximate that but for this we're going to need to take the derivative of this function we could take the derivative symbolically and then put it in the calculator but because this is a calculator question we can just take in deriv of the function that we already have in location y2 and so that's what we're going to do we want in deriv we're going to differentiate in the problem with respect to t but we're using x as our stand-in because we're not working in parametric mode and we'll put this second variable in and let's see we're taking the derivative of this with respect to x and we're going to evaluate it at 3 negative 5.4667 and that completes part A Part B is asking for the slope in the xy plane of the tangent line at t equals 3. So the slope at 3 is the same as asking for dy dx at t equals 3. And that in turn, I'm going to write this down a little so I don't get caught up with this above it is uh, dy dt over dx dt both evaluated at t equals 3 and this again is going to be a numerical approximation so I include the approximation value but in the calculator it's a simple matter of y2 of 3 divided by y1 of 3. So again, note the benefit of putting the function in only once and then referencing it each time using the VARS key. 0 0.0317. Okay, part C. The position of the particle. We find position for each coordinate separately. And in both instances, we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Namely, if you want to know the function at some new value, you take the function at a previous value uh, for which you knew uh, its, uh, its value 
in this case x of 0, and then you integrate from 0, from the place you know, up to the place you want to know, uh, the derivative. So again, that'll be a numerical evaluation. I'm just going to write the y3n right next to it. y of 0 plus another integral, 0 to 3, of y prime with respect to t dt. So we'll get a pair of numbers here. And we'll use uh, what we know about this. Let's put all of the information in. Here's where we use that initial condition. x of 0 is just 0. y of 0 is negative 4. So let's go to the calculator. That's going to refer to uh, y1 integrated from 0 to 3. And so we need this function. We're going from 0 up to 3. Our x value involves dx dt located here and we're integrating in reality we're integrating with respect to t but in the calculator we say with respect to x so that comes out to 21 may as well do y2 while we're at it and notice that you can just put in the previous calculation and then go in and modify it saves a little bit of time take out the y1 we'll insert the y2 but we're adding negative 4 to this because that was the initial condition negative 3.2264 we suspect that this is actually an exact equality so just to be OCD I'll put that in and so I suppose I need to write out my point as 21 comma negative 3.2264 well we're down to the home stretch and part D wants the total distance traveled from 0 to 3 now total distance traveled for a parametric function is the same as the length of the curve over that same interval. And rather than memorizing the formula separately, it's useful to note that the length of curve calculation for parametrics is just the integral of the speed. So I'm going to write that out. Uh, let's see, what do they ask for? Distance traveled. is integral 0 to 3 integration with respect to t of the square root of dx dt the quantity squared plus dy dt the quantity squared so let's input that. And we need Let's see, we don't want n deriv, we want f n i n t. Sorry. Okay, we're going from 0 up to 3 
Now let's get this function in properly. It's the square root and we need a y1 squared plus y2 squared. That quantity squared plus that quantity squared all with respect to time but again we're doing our whole calculation with x standing in for t our total distance traveled is 21.0911 That's it.